across the board here with Ian the Colonel here on hawkradio.org and across the board radio.com. The Colonel is absent at the moment, but he'll be back in a little while. Uh, again, you know, discovering music is one of my favorite parts about this show. And a band I just discovered uh, really just a few weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, is an up and coming band out of the South. If you haven't heard these guys, go check them out right now. The Weeks. And I've got Sam with me right now on guitar and vocals. Sam, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, like I said, huge fans. And, and like we were talking off air, um, you know, I was sitting listening to one of those uh, internet uh, so, you know, music services that just plays random music and, and heard, uh, you know, I, again, I can't remember which song it was by you guys and immediately fell in love with it, you know, because we love. That kind of it's like a southern rock kind of a sludge, <laughs> however you want to say it, you know, pop kind of thing, yeah. and and um, you know, like a, a meld of like a Patrick Sweeney, Tad Benoit, Black Crows, Black Keys type thing, and uh, oh, yeah. just huge fans. And, and people ask me, you know, I I said you got to hear this band, The Weeks. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been saying that, and people are like, well, what do they sound like? And I'm like, well, they sound like themselves. You have to check it out. But I would say just cool is the is the is the first word that <laughs> yeah, comes to right, mind I'll man take that. yeah I, I just i love it but you describe your sound into people you know we're, yeah, we're playing we're, some of your, usually your try music to kind but. of um we just mix it up a lot you know we don't really try to um i, I don't know we've never really like there's never been a moment where we're like well we really like this so like let's try right. to do something like that you know it's just it's just always been we've been playing together since we were like 14 so it's always been just like it, it's kind of stayed like it started. Right. You know, like, <laughs> back then, it was just like, well, I don't, I don't, we don't really have any agenda or anything, but I want to play a song like this. I want to play a faster song. I want to play a slower song that's more soulful, you know? And um, and it just sort of keeps in rotation like that. And it, it's, it's worked out well for us, you know? It, it, it's sort of, we never pigeonhole ourselves like that. That's what makes it good, yeah, though. You're you're playing what you love, you know, and and yeah, what comes yeah. we, through. Yeah, we never your... get stuck playing anything because, like, oh yeah, well, we were sort of we were really into these like into this kind of music for you know two years, and so then that was the that was the two years where we got a little successful, and then we're stuck doing that because that's what we were doing then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking a, a couple of weeks ago with uh, Jim Legg, who's uh, also John Wesley from the Black Diamond Heavies. And okay. we asked him, you know, and he's down in your area, and we asked him, uh, you know, what's missing from music? And he said, honesty. I want to hear that in a band. And that's what I hear out of your music. You can't, oh, right you know, on. categorize yourselves, but it sounds like you're playing music because that's the number one thing you're good at, and that's what you, like, you don't know how to do anything else. You, you could. Yeah, I really <laughs> But Yeah, I mean, it helps us when, you know, like I said, we, I think I was 14 when this band started. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, our bass player, Damon, was the oldest, and he was 16. And um, so that was, I think we're coming up on like seven years now. So wow. we, none of us have ever been in other bands before, so there's no like, yeah, it's, it's really just, that's the only thing I know how to do. You know, I've been playing in bars with these dudes since I was in eighth grade. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, I have no idea what I would do. No. Uh, you know, I really am excited to hear more of your stuff too. Got to get more music from you guys because um, I know Gutter Gaunt Gangster, um, Dear Bo Jackson's coming out this year on Serpents and Snakes mm -hmm. Records. So you guys actually signed to Kings of Leon's label, um, you know, and I, and I can hear that as well. Some, I mean, some of your uh, album titles are awesome too. Why call the one Rumspringa, which is the time when the when Amish kids can go out and like enjoy time and all that kind of stuff? What, where did that I, name come from? I mean, it ended up. Like, usually what happens with us, we have a lot of weird titles for songs or records, and um, a lot of times it'll just be like, you know, that's got a nice little ring to it. Yeah. And then, <laughs> you know, by the time the record's out or the song's out or whatever, we'll have some, you know, ex we've, we've, we'll have realized, it, like, oh, well, actually, it sort of makes sense because, you know, I think Room Spring, uh, that was 2009, and um, that was like, we had, we had all sort of just, we were, I think... The first bat, first uh, couple kids had gone to college at that point, so like I was obviously I'm, as the baby, I think I was probably still like <laughs> like a sophomore in high school, but <laughs> uh, I was just gonna go along with it, pretend like I was on room spring it too. Nice, um, that's a good idea. We were enjoying our first little batch of freedom there. 
So, uh, and I know you guys are on tour right now, uh, you know, going through the South and even up to New York and, and kind of a little bit of everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Weeks Music, by the way, the weeksmusic.com or the weeksmusic.tumblr.com is uh, the way to keep in t- uh, ch- touch with these guys. They're everywhere Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, Spotify, you guys are a little bit of everywhere. We got it all. Yeah, man, absolutely. You have to these days, right? It's it's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, talk about what it what it was like to sign with um, Serpents and Snakes again, Kings of Leon's label. What what has that brought to the mix? Uh, it was just honestly, it was just, it really felt nice and full circle. Like, I mean, I saw them. I was probably like twelve when I first saw them. Twelve, thirteen. Like, I think it was maybe like two thousand three or two thousand four. Okay. Um, my dad's a musician, and uh, one of his friends had, like knew that I was just sort of getting into rock and roll. And um, I guess it was right after their first tour over here, right after they sort of exploded overseas. And um, they still had the handlebars and the oh yeah, you know the uh, they look the there from the seventies, yeah. And I'm 12 years old, and so I'm obviously incredibly vulnerable to just like, oh my god, this looks they look awesome, right? Um, that's what I want to do. You know, and that was sort of like my first moment of like, okay, cool. Uh, not only do I like rock and roll, but I want to play it, and I can I can do that. <laughs> you know, um, and so you know, to be like ten years later um, on their label, hanging out with them, it, it's it's and they're just they're the best dudes. They've been um, our new record, Dero Jackson. Um, I mean, we had a, a complete creative control over everything you know you always worry like it's rare especially when the band's just starting i mean as high profile as they are like um you know if, if there's i guess the, the record label this will zero will be like the you know maybe fourth or fifth record i think on the label and so like this early in the process you'd think that um you know you or perhaps worry that the band would the, the kings would want to you know have really uh, very hands-on you right. know and want to help out with you know and now they haven't helped out with the decisions, but they've been like, they've honestly just been there for like, you know, we, we want to make a big record and they've made a lot of big records. So they're really just there to like, Hey man, I'm having, I'm, I'm struggling like, um, with not like n- nothing musical or anything. But, like they're really just there to kind of help out. They've never, I think they came to the studio like once or twice. So I'm making the record and really just gave us like thumbs up guys. Nice. Good work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the thing, though. It, it, why mess with it? It's perfect. Yeah, it's why perfect mess? Perfect band's label. <laughs> you know, it's like every, every band talks about, like, man, I wish if our label would do this, it would be perfect. You know, if I ever start a label, that's how I'm going to do it, and they've they've done exactly that. Well, but th- because your band is so good and doing the right things as well, I mean, there's got to ha- you have to have both sides of that yeah. for sure. And and I I love the way you guys see the world or at least you you put the way you put it out there you know like your bio on your website again which is the weeks com, is it, it's more like a song or a poem instead of just a straight up bio oh, yeah you know what I mean? and and your quote that you guys have several places and i love this is as for our places in history we will run naked through your streets before we sit decorated in your halls why that quote uh, um really we like we'd you know, you read a lot of those biographies, like, well, you, we started in 2006, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff. It's just like, it's like a Wikipedia article. Right, right. <laughs> at this point, and, you know, um, we're really into, like, um, we love Bob Dylan, and I mm-hmm. love the way that he's always, like, just sort of fabricated his own history, you know? Um, from his name and everything, yeah. From, yeah, yeah, exactly, everything. Like, um, that Chronicles book that he put out about okay. 10 years ago, like, yeah. I love the way that he'll sit there and there's no, I don't, I love this man. I think he is a mythological creature and immortal, but right. he'll, there are parts of that book where he'll sit down and recollect an entire, like, conversation from 50 years ago. How do you do that? it just happened. And you know it's not right. Like, right. there's no way that, that that conversation probably ever happened. Right. It did. Not like that. But as you read it, you're like, totally, yeah, it's Bob Dylan. This is exactly what happened. <laughs> that's a good uh, point and so I just got and Kyle I'll, obviously a little biased but he's my favorite lyricist he's just you know I, 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 he's really come into his own the last oh shit, five years um, and so I was just like man you're, there's no reason for us to hire out a biography you know somebody to write a biography right uh, make, write something that's completely nonsensical but actually like you know it uses if you I guess if you know the actual facts then that little paragraph makes sense. 
but for the outside people like who don't know anything about us, like it's it's pretty vague. But it's beautiful to but read it sounds, too. It sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's incredible. <laughs> you know, definitely go check it out again. Theweeksmusic.com dot com and, and check out their bio. It's it's a little bit too long to read here, but uh, it, it does end with that quote. It's. Uh, yeah, it just it, it sums you guys up from what I hear out of your music, and you do guitar and vocals. When you're mm-hmm. when you're looking for tone, you know everybody chases tone. You'll never play the song the same play, you know, same way twice. What do you look for in the recording process and, and when you're live? I mean, are, are you doing? Are you going dry? For tone? Or, yeah, for tone. Yeah, I mean, what, um, really, I like I bought. I have I play a Telecaster Deluxe with two nice. buckers through a um, Blues Deville, and. Fender, and I've never, I've had that combination since I was 14. Love a Telecaster. Yeah, I mean, it's just, and I don't know, and it's sort of, it plays so smooth, and um, and I don't know if it's just because I've been playing it for so long um, that, it, that it feels that it plays so well to me, it plays like butter, and, um, but, yeah, and I've, I've always gotten um, so many comments, like, on tone stuff, like, oh, well, you know, like, what what like pedal chain are you using? Like, do you have certain like what's what's first in your pedal chain? What's last? You right. have any like little secrets? But really, I, I've always I've always held by the tone is in your left hand. Yep. Um, and my my dad's a bass player, and he that's he taught himself how to play fifty years ago, and he taught me how to play. You know, when I was a kid, not not nothing like uh, not too serious, but basically just he taught me listen to the music and try to play along until it stops going wow 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 it's <laughs> <laughs> a good point and it, it works but uh yeah so he always as a bass player just like it's all on your left hand i mean like so true especially as a guitar player um that's where you get your sustain that's where you get everything and um it's that's that's honestly been my best the best advice i've been given you know I, i've started to use pedals recently um i went like probably four years with a tuner Nice. No overdrive or anything. Right. And, um, I just I, I just sort of started playing around, especially since we got, we went as a four piece for a while um, before we got Admiral on the keyboards, which was a nice little formative period for us, where I had to sort of relearn how to play the guitar. Uh huh. As more like a rhythmic lead kind right. of thing, like a sort of a Keith, and um, how to use a, a lot of um, using my I use my thumb a lot, like I wrap it around like. I would watch all those old Hendrix videos, and he would. Yep. His hands are just so enormous that he would be playing like the third string down, like the D string with his thumb. Yeah, it's so uh, hard I can't do though. That, but yeah, I can't. I can't do that, and I, I try to get out of it because it's it's actually technically a bad habit to use your thumb anyway. But uh, but yeah, it just works sometimes. Oh yeah, I use my thumb like all the time. Yeah. I I broke it like I don't know. I'm still not quite sure when I broke it, but <laughs> I've got this on my right hand or on my left hand. It's like. I just have this janky thumb. It's like at a right angle. But when I put my thumb and my forefinger together, it's like the shape of a Telecaster neck. Perfect. So maybe that's what it is. But so it works out perfect for me. Janky thumb. By the way, that sounds like another good album title for you guys. Yeah. 20, 2014, <laughs> janky thumb coming out. Dropping janky for the week. Thumb. <laughs> Across the board here again with uh, Sam from The Weeks uh, talking with us right now. Um, you know, Again, Dear Bo Jackson drops this, this spring, but do we know exactly when yet? Uh, April 30th. April 30th, nice. So not too long of a wait, a little longer than I'd like to hear, but uh, we can still listen to yeah. Gutter, Gaunt, Gangster, and Room Springer and all of those. Uh, love all of those. And what you said about you know playing without pedals, um, a lot of good you know blues guitarists, rhythm guitarists do that, and especially it works so well with a Telecaster because there's nowhere mm-hmm. to hide on a Tele. You have two knobs. You've got a volume and a tone pretty much, and that's it. You've got nowhere yeah, you got to go nothing. with it, so... Um, you know, you have to be good to play that. Do you still practice every day? Do you do you try to get better? Uh, I play guitar all the time. That's really all I do. Mm. Um, that's I mean, because that's like I said, it's like it's like it's all I, I do for a living, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, I probably play about anywhere from two, three, or four hours a day. Wow. Yeah, I, I just. <clears throat> Either you know writing or like working on. Um, I'm I'm the one in the band, sort of like a I'm the perfectionist. Okay. You know I just can't help it, and um, and so yeah I'll just if I hear somebody play some type of lick or something it's like man I can't I don't know how to do that it'll drive me crazy until I figure it out. Right. And so I'll I'll, I'll be that guy who will like tuck away like if I'm at a, even at a club or something on tour 
I'll like go snatch my guitar and go, go to the green room and be like, I gotta figure that out. Nice. I want to do that. That's what drives you, right? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you've toured with some some great musicians as well. Actually, some that are friends of the show, Meat Puppets, uh, Local H, some guys like that. Have you learned anything, you guys being a young band, uh, not as seasoned as, as some of those, have you learned anything from them, good or bad? Oh, I can't even describe how much, especially like between um, Kurt from the Meat Puppets and Scott from Local H yep. and Luther from the North Pacific All-Stars. Yeah. I mean, those dudes, <laughs> those dudes are legends. And the best part about all of them is that we were on tour of them. We started tour of them when we were a four piece. And so I'd, I'd had probably three years of being a lead guitar player behind a rhythm guitar player. Mm-hmm. So if, you know, if I broke a string or if I just like forgot something, I could technically just bow out for a minute. Right. You know, and nobody would really notice. Um, but as a four piece, like, you know, and like it with a telecast, you just got to know where to hide. Can't, I can't stop playing. Exactly. If I'm playing, you know, if I'm playing a lead part, I need to figure out how I can play a chord with it. And um, and those dudes just, I mean, Luther Dickinson from the All Stars is um, for me the best guitar player that ever lived. I never saw um, Dwayne Allman. I never saw Hendrix or Stevie Stevie Ray or anything. yeah, we're too young for that. Yeah, but I have seen Luther Dickinson about thirty times, and he blows my mind. Things that that man can do with a guitar, um, and so I'm always. I don't really have a whole lot of shame about if I if I'm you know if it's my show if I just played, um, I will be right in the front watching this. <laughs> and Dickinson's not actually that old; he's only thirty nine. So, yeah, believe it yeah. or not, you know he's he's good. There's so many it, young, good young players like uh, Joe Bonamassa is only I think thirty five. Yeah, and it's about it's just really about getting that start. I know. I think the first time Luther was on a record was um, uh, what was it? It was the Replacements record with Can't Hardly Wait on it, uh, Please to Meet Me, because okay. his dad produced it. And so like, Luther Dickinson's first album credit is on a replacements record. <laughs> I think Shooting Dirty Pool is the track. Right. Um, <laughs> You've got to... Yeah, I mean, so that's, that get, they got at it when they were, you know, kids. Yeah, get get your start somewhere, you know. Yeah, uh, those formative years, man. Those are pretty important. So, you know, you le- you're learning, you're growing, you're developing as a guitar player now, as a singer. You're playing with some legends that you'd love. Uh, you're signed to your dream label. What What is your goal? What does this success mean to you? Success for the week? I just success. want to be able to do this forever. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't really have, I want to put out one record every, you know, 18 months, two years. Please do. <laughs> uh, you know, tour for half of the year, and then I leave myself like two months at home. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we just got off the we. I'm in New York right now, and we've been on the road, or I, we we weren't on the road for like six weeks. And by the like the first couple of weeks, we're like, oh, this is nice. I can kind of kick back. I'm mm-hmm. not, you know, in a van eight hours a day. And then once like the last two weeks that it hit, I was losing my mind. Right. It, it's <laughs> gotta be weird, right? I was crazy man. Because oh, you're used so to the weird. momentum, right? You need to yeah. need to keep going. That's that explains mm-hmm. things like. The Rolling Stones, you know, 125 years old, still playing shows. It's like, what are yeah. they doing? They don't know anything else. Yeah, like, what else am I going to do? I'm going to be a, a CPA for a summer? <laughs> right. It's, you know, you're lucky enough yeah, to... Uh, I need to be in a bar. Right. You're so talented, though, that you can't... I mean, you're, you're able to do this for a living, which is incredible. And Yeah, we, that's, that's, that's... I mean, I can't express enough how blessed we are to be able to do this. I mean, I'm, I'm 21 years old, and I, I didn't... I didn't go to college or anything, and, you know, all those things you said were true. <laughs> right. And I get to do all those things, and I'm in a, it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of weird to, like, sort of sit sit back every once in a while and just sort of, like, rattle off the, the ones and twos of those kind of things. You're like, oh, man, all right, yeah. It's pretty awesome, those. right? Yeah, just yeah. can't look past the moment, you know? Now, mm-hmm. if you knew you only had time in your life to listen to one more song, and you can hear it, or you can perform it, can be yours or anybody else's. What is the last song that you want to hear? Uh, I'm going to go Acadian Driftwood by the band. Oh, okay, the band. Wow, nice. That's, I, was, I was listening to it a few weeks ago. I was like, I actually had the same thought in my head. Like, if there was only one song left, really, this would be the one. Nice. Why that one? That's always our signature question we ask everybody. Why that question? That's a though? good question. Um, well, that, I mean, to me, they're the, they're the best band uh, they're the most aptly named band of all time. The band. Um, it was just down the line, like, 
you know, you got like they're they're a lot like a Zeppelin where every band is a prodigy, mm-hmm. um, except that there's one more of them, <laughs> and, uh, and they have a Garth Hudson, which on those keyboards, I mean, he's playing. I love looking at like those track listings. That's really what what gets me is when you see like what every member played on things, and then you look at Garth Hudson on a band record. It's like he played thirty instruments right. on it, and they're always always your favorite parts on those songs. Yeah, it, the orchestration of it and the arrangement is just beautiful. Yeah, some people are just savants at, at, at writing music, you know, and they're they're good at it. And as fans, we're pretty that's, proud and, mm-hmm. and excited that and you they guys did five of them. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, again, you know, that's and that's why we're such big fans of bands like you, man. You found out, you know, that you are good at it at a young age, and, and you're doing what uh what you're good at and we appreciate it you know uh, like you said you didn't go to college uh-huh. but that's okay it wouldn't have made you a better guitar player or singer <laughs> yeah, exactly. so you're doing what you need to do so um and again the weeksmusic.tumblr.com or the weeksmusic.com it'll either one will take you to the same site and uh, they're on tour right now check them out and dear bo jackson's coming out in april april 30th and right. uh, we always say here that music is made to be experienced, not just listened to. A band like The Weeks, you have to go see these guys live. I haven't had the uh, chance yet, but uh, it's on my list for sure. Um, oh, yeah. I would I'll love to do that. There. So Absolutely, man. So <laughs> be back here in a few minutes. Uh, again, check out The Weeks. Sam, thanks so much. Back here in a few minutes I'll on Across the Board me. with Ian the Colonel here on hawkradio.org and acrossthebordradio.com.